So today, inshallah, we are going to talk about WLAN and IP networking threat and vulnerabilities analysis. So we continue the, the uh, second part of this lecture. We finished part one uh, together with uh, the quiz last week. And uh, today we are going to, to, to take or to navigate through the second part. So mainly we, we uh, have covered um, social engineering. Uh, we talk about how uh, attackers can reach, the employees can reach any person they want to attack or victims uh, through using of social engineering. Uh, also, we talk about war driving and we talk about the rogue access point uh, and evil twin. <clears throat> so, uh, today we will cover Bluetooth vulnerabilities and we will talk about the packet analysis. Mainly these two parts, the most important part of this lecture today. Bluetooth vulner vulnerabilities and packet analysis. So uh, for uh, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth is a short range radio frequency communication protocol. We are using in the Bluetooth, we are using the uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency spectrum. You know that 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is used by Wi-Fi. Uh, and Bluetooth actually uses the adaptive frequency hopping, this is a technique used by Bluetooth to uh, on a spread spectrum technique to uh, mitigate the effect of inference and frequency jamming or blocking. So this way, uh, Bluetooth will avo avoid the interference with other signals. Uh, what is the adaptive frequency hopping? Uh, actually, it is like uh, the, what we talked about previously is is taking very small frequency and jumping over the channel from frequency to frequency. Jumping from frequency to frequency just to avoid that or to mitigate the effect of inference or interference. Uh, and is used to create a wireless personal area network. You can use uh, you can play with your friends with a game using Bluetooth. You can make a small network using Bluetooth. This uh, kind of network is called uh, wireless uh, personal area network. You can connect up to eight devices in a P Connect. This is a small network created using a Bluetooth connection uh, and it uses very low uh, power. One uh, uh, my uh, mega one micro uh, watt of a signal. Just a small signal is used in this type of network. What is important about Bluetooth is it is its security. Bluetooth specification allows three levels of security. The first one is authentication. The second one is confidentiality. And the third one is authorization. Authentication means the Bluetooth knows who is going to connect with, which device and the device for who. So this is authentication. Confidentiality means when I send a data between Bluetooth and another Bluetooth, I make sure that nobody can eavesdrop drop this data. Nobody can listen to this data. This is confidentiality. And the authorization means I have my own device. I have my own images on my own device. Nobody can, can reach these images and these devices unless I let him take it or I give him the authorized the authorization needed. For example, I have a movie on my telephone and I want uh, on my mobile or mo mobile device and I want to send the movie to my friend. So my friend 
Okay, uh, so my friend, uh, I will give him the permission needed. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute, okay. So I give my friend the permission needed to read the data on my device. If he is going to use the Bluetooth, so I give him the, the needed authorization so he can copy the movie or copy the game that I have on my device. So these are the most important parts of the Bluetooth security. security. The first one is authentication. Second one is confidentiality and third one is authorization. If I have this on any Bluetooth device, this is going to be strong Bluetooth or strong security. And Bluetooth supports four security modes actually. The first mode is mode one. They call it mode one. Mode two. Mode three and mode four. Security mode one, security mode two, security mode three, security mode four. These are the, 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 the four modes of security in Bluetooth. And the Bluetooth service security types, they have two types, trusted and untrusted. The trusted mode, the device has a full access to all services services of another trusted device. If I have a trusted move, uh, mode between, for example, I can have my uh, loudspeaker. If I have loudspeaker in my house, I can make a trusted mode. Trusted mode, the, uh, you can access the full functionality of the loudspeaker uh, whenever you want to connect to it. Anybody in the house or uh, any uh, family member can uh, easily reach the loudspeaker and connect to it. This is a trusted mode. But the data, the, the, the device or my device, my uh, mobile device, nobody can connect it. To, so I can make it untrusted mode. Untrusted device don't have an established relationship and can reach only restricted devices, uh, services, restricted services. So, so the most important here to, to remember is that the Bluetooth supports the security modes, security mode one, security mode two, security mode three, and security mode four. We will talk about security mode one, two, three, and four in detail right now. So with security modes one and two, no service security trust model is applied. No service security trust model is applied. No security, I mean, one and three security is very low. In contrast with Bluetooth security mode two, authentication, encryption, and authorization are required. So if you want, you can make your Bluetooth in mode one or three. So uh, uh, anybody can reach the device and you can use its services. But if you make it in mode two, so you have to make authentication, you have to make authorization and, and confidentiality using encryption. Okay, so this is the security modes and how, uh, yeah, I mean, how much is their security? What about security level four? Actually security level four, uh, has three uh, levels of security. The security or service level three, service level two, service level one, and service level zero. Service level one, you can adapt mode four even to three service levels. The service level three requires man in the middle protection and encryption. Maybe you can see service level 
three is the highest standard or the highest the highest security or the, the, the most secure mode or level. Because it requires a man in the middle protection and encryption and preferably user interaction. User interaction means uh, you send the you send the number uh, to your peer. You, uh, for example, two want to connect. Two persons want to connect to, to each other. One of them send a number to the other, and the other one send a confirmation number, and so on. This is user interaction. So service level uh, three is uh, very strong because it makes sure that there is no man in the middle uh, attack and it has encryption. Service level two requires encryption only, only encryption. So no user interaction, no man in the middle protection. Service level one doesn't require encryption. User interaction is not necessary. So this is a, this is service level one. About service level zero requires neither man in the middle protection and encryption nor user interaction. So this is the lowest service level here. The highest service level is three. The lowest service level is zero. As you see, zero here can be, uh, can be the measure of security. So zero means no security and three means the highest security. Actually, there are three types of attacks for Bluetooth. Namely, we can call them blue jacking, the first one, blue snarfing, blue bugging. There are three types of attacks for Bluetooth. Blue jacking, again, blue jacking, blue snarfing, and blue bugging. These are the most common uh, three types of attacks. And for blue jacking, this is kind of a spam attack. I, I, I want to tell you before reading the slide, I want to tell you about the general idea of blue jacking. Blue jacking is just a spam. But actually, the attacker want to know the ID of the Bluetooth. Or you, you can say uh, he should have first communication with the device. If he has the first communication with the device, he can keep the ID, the, blue, the Bluetooth device ID, and he can, he can always send the spam messages whenever, whenever, the, whenever uh, the, uh, the victim is in the vicinity of the attacker or be, uh, beside the attacker. So this is mainly about spamming. It is not, it is harming, but it's not too harming. And actually they use it for business. They use it for business. If, uh, for example, if you go to uh, malls, for example, you go, you go to buy something, to go to shopping. So you, maybe you will receive some spam messages using your Bluetooth. If you are, com if you already communicated to somebody in the mall before. So it came about through the misuse of Bluetooth feature whereby a mobile phone could exchange a business card or a message with another phone in the vicinity. If you change it, the business card or anything with, the, uh, with, with anybody in the, in the, in the mall or when you, bought, or when you are, are outside and buy something, <clears throat> for example, he can use this uh, the first, he, 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 the attacker or he or she, the attacker is seeking the first communication. If he get the first communication, then he will continue attacking you day after another. Whenever you go uh, and be in, it, in his vicinity, vicinity neighborhood, okay? And it is used by two store keepers in malls, for example, for marketing and advertising spamming. So it's mainly about spamming. And Bluetooth devices needed to peer before communication. This is the most important thing, the peer. 
but actually this is this can be done by trusting you can be done by uh, uh, inviting the uh, the victim by giving him business card or uh, about the discount or something like that so passerby didn't know with whom his or her device was peering and that that is not the first time this is uh, the next coming days they receive many messages from the attackers after the spammers uh, initial message was accepted the spammers bluetooth device id was added to trusted contacts so uh, whenever you are in the vicinity of the attacker you will receive another messages the second attack is blue snarfing and actually blue snarfing is this is dangerous attack you can say is a technique whereby an attacker gains access to unauthorized information on a bluetooth enabled device such as a mobile phone this is the most dangerous one this is not a spam it is hijacking the device it is commanding the device for example your images are exposed your personal sensitive data are exposed so this is dangerous blue snarfing attacker can then access context calendar mails and text messages your even uh, sms messages your ca you can say uh, whatsapp messages anything in your device can be reached using the blue snarfing uh, attack and, how it happens uh, this happens by you say it is not happening just by you are walking in uh, a mall or walking in the street walking in the street and you uh, you are attacked no this is not going to happen it is happening by you do something you have to do something for example somebody you are standing uh, and somebody asking you to contact for for giving you something for giving you data or go, giving you voucher for discounting anything you you will not be attacked without any action from you for example in blue snarfing the victim's phone must have bluetooth enabled and in discoverable mode this can be done, you, 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 for example, can do it for, uh, uh, for, for transferring data between you and your friend. You want to transfer data and the victim is in your vicinity and can discover your Bluetooth and do the attack. So, for example, I, I'm asking you now not to do that in public not to do that in public. If you want to transfer between you and your friend, you want to transfer movies or something, you make sure that nobody in your vicinity, nobody very near to you. Don't do that in cafe, cafe places. You know, cafe places, uh, groups are standing there drinking tea, drink coffee. These places are dangerous. Don't do that in, uh, in public. So you have to make something. You cannot be attacked just by walking the street and somebody attacking you. This is not possible. He, he should do uh, uh, something, some action, and you reply to that action. Okay? Uh, and make sure that you don't pair with the Bluetooth unless you know that this is the Bluetooth. For example, and this is happening actually. You have a Bluetooth device, for example, uh, a headset. And you want to pair with the headset. You go to the dev your device and you find the headset name and you press it. Sometimes the attacker knows your handset name. 
he can do the same. He can make uh, his Bluetooth with the same name. So it appears in your device and you pair with it. You pair, you press and pair with it. Actually, you don't know that is not, this is not your headset. It is the, hide, the, the attacker device. Okay. And Blue Snarfing uses a GET request to pull information from the victim's device. This is a GET request is like, uh, if you know about GET and SIT in the uh, POST, POST and uh, the, the, the commons in the web, something like that is used. GET request, it can be programmed or using a program to pull, to pull all your data. If he, you have a data on your device, he can pull these data and have copy of it. This is software. You can say this is a software. Uses a software to take to take your data. The last one is blue bugging. And you can say blue bugging. Okay, let's let's have summarize the blue snarfing, blue jacking, and blue bugging. Blue jacking is spam. Okay. I will give you the keywords. Bluejacking is just a spam. Blue snarfing is hijacking. Hijacking means controlling your device. And blue bugging is listening or if it's dropping, if it's dropping, is last, you can say uh, pa passive attack, passive. You can take or listen to the conversation between you and your friend, between two persons. The last one is blue bugging. The third one of the uh, Bluetooth attacks is blue bugging. It enables the an attacker to command their entire handset. And also uh, blue bugging, you can say, I think, yes, it has two types actually, is not only to listen to the conversation, but also it can reach to the data in your device. Okay. And the required, uh, required trusted device status establishes a, connect, a connection by tricking victims of phone into believing that the attacker device to be a Bluetooth headset. As I told you, this attack is common. Uh, just you see the device name on your mobile device and you press it and you pair with it. If you pair with it, you are you are attacked. The attacker can control just about every function of the phone via AT commons. And the attacker can listen to the conversation, hence the name the blue bugging. Okay, so this is the blue bugging, and we talk about the three types: blue snarfing, blue jacking, and blue bugging. Okay. And now I think we have an activity here. Can anybody help me to solve this? So blue jacking, we can talk uh, about uh, the uses of a git request to pull in from Bluetooth enabled device, git commands, yes. Blue jacking is the third one. Is the one the, the third one? Blue snarfing. Yeah, the first one is the blue bugging, right? Or no, doctor, I'm saying blue snarfing is the third one. Blue snarfing. Blue snarfing is the third one. No, third one is um, the blue jacking, I think. This involves misuse of a Bluetooth feature will buy a mobile phone uh, exchange business card. This is the first one. The first it's one is blue jacking. blue jacking. Yes. So the first one is blue jacking. And uh, when you talk about business card and, and uh, uh, spam, this is a spam. What about blue, blue snuffing and blue bugging? We take in the, in the same order. So we study the first one is blue jacking, the second one is blue snarfing, and the third one is blue bugging. 
Blue snarfing about coming, uh, copying all data and blue bugging can control. You can say it's control your device, controlling your device, listening to the conversation and controlling your device. So blue the bugging. The second one is uh, blue bugging. This work is by first gaining trusted device, typically through the business card trick. And the next stage is to establish connection by tricking the victim's phone into believing the attacker device to be a Bluetooth headset or some other peripheral then the attacker can control most functions phone using the AT commons. The last one, the, the last one this is the blue bugging, right? Yes, yes, yes. blue bugging. And this is blue snarfing, the, the first one. Okay. Okay. Doctor, I have a question, but it's not about the lesson. Can I ask it, please? Okay. Yeah. Um, last week, the quiz, like we had something like this, the FDMA and all of this, and it have its meanings. If we wrote the same, is there any problem? I don't, I, I, sorry, you can, can you repeat? Yeah, I can repeat. Like last week's quiz, okay? Yes. Oh. Like, like this activity, it was for the FDMA, TDMA, yes. okay, with their meanings. Yes. If we, if we did put, like, I memorized it from this activity itself. If I did yes. put the same, or like I changed uh, maybe sentence or two sentence by my own, Yes. This like we will have a very bad marks or low marks for actually, this. Actually, actually, you can do anything you want, but you can do. I anything. don't really know, doctor, if you discussed about the quiz last week because I left um, early, so that's okay. why I'm asking. Yeah, my mic is actually good, alhamdulillah, but, but it's not that good, you know. Doctor, it was like one of the, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, just I want to tell you something. Okay. It is not it's not a problem if you are on the only one do do uh, something like uh, memorizing something. You're writing the same comment, the same exact text. No problem. But if mm -hmm. I see that the same exact text for five or uh, six students, this is. This is this is uh, copying from the same source. Copying from the same source doesn't mean that you doesn't mean that you are copying from each other and you send it through the WhatsApp or something. It is maybe you are copying from the slides. It is not about you only. Yeah, yeah, I the, know. That it is uh, another. The other students prove that the other students prove that if you do that. You and your friends are doing the same thing. So yeah. this is a problem, actually. But if you write your own word, I, I'm asking about explain, find the find the, the, the relationship between uh, two things. And I found, I, I'm asking about the relationship between two things and you give me the definitions from the slides. And I'm not actually asking about the definitions. So it's better if you do it in your own you do it with your own words or even yeah. trying to memorize this is not going to give you me the exact the exact similar answer never i'm saying that and I'm, I'm trusting that 100 percent if two persons and they uh, they memorize they will not write the same sentences it is not it is not like uh uh, standard things. I'm I'm asking about the ISO. I can understand you, doctor. You know, doctor, I like I used to summarize all of the chapters, each and every slide, and I wrote it by my own, not even from the uh, chapter itself. Okay, no problem. And even if it is from the chapter, there is no problem in one uh, person. Yeah, I mean, if you are the only one, no problem. But if I see all do you are doing the same. And you are uh, using very rare English words. The slides using the, the very standard words, like uh, sliver of time. This word is not used frequently. 
you are doing it like copying from the same source, actually. So if I find something like that, I cannot, I cannot give you the full mark. So, so now uh, what, what uh, I have done is searching for the, uh, for specific sentences and I found very long sentences similar between not all the questions actually, actually some of the questions and I subtracted 50% uh, of, the, of the mark. And the others, some others, I know that they copy, actually, I know. But actually, I cannot have evidence for it. So I leave the mark full. I give the full mark. So if I have 100% evidence, I, I can uh, take an action. If I don't have evidence, I leave it for the students. I give it to the side of the students, for, so I give a full mark. OK, so uh, now. Uh, we can continue our discussion about uh, blue, Bluetooth. And you can say Bluetooth is very good, very good uh, way of transferring data. But actually it is, you can say a trade-off between convenience and security. Easy to use and security. And Always in security, you can think about this balance. You do very strong security, very tough security will not be user friendly. For example, if you get into the university campus, every time you enter, the gatekeeper asks you about your ID. What will you, you will do? You will be not happy about that because every time you enter the campus, somebody asking you about your ID. Actually, also the other way around is not good. So if anybody can enter the campus at any time, this is not good too because un invited persons can come into the campus and do bad things, can steal devices, can harm students, can uh, uh, distribute bad ideas, and so on. Very easy and very easy to use system with high security. That's what we want. We want. Easy to use and more secure. You have to take this trade-off in your mind and find this balance between the easy to use and the security. If you make it very easy, this will make it not too secure. If you make it too secure, it will not be very easy to use. So this is the trade-off between convenience and security. And Bluetooth vulnerabilities short pins used during pairing because you want to transfer data very quick, quickly between you and your friend so you just uh, give him a very short pins you can say okay one 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 okay so the attacker may uh, can guess these pins users pairing devices in public you are doing that in public mostly in public if it is in public you are not alone you are with attackers and user convenience. Okay. And user convenience. Uh, this is what we have said that uh, the user, the use, the easy to use means that it is easy to be attacked. Okay, so uh, packet analysis. What about packet analysis? Actually, when we talk about any devices and any transfer of data between sender and receiver, we have to think about packet analysis or packet analyzers. Packet analysis means it captured the data and decipher the packets between the sender and the receiver. Uh, there are many uh, uh, common analyzers, Ethernet, 
Wireshark, the Ethernet Wireshark, and the Airshark. The, these are the two common uh, packages are used in the packet analyze, analysis. They are packet analyzers and they are used in the packet analysis. In wireless environment, all traffic is visible on the same frequencies and the channels. So no, somebody can capture, you know the frequency, you know the channel, you can capture whatever on that frequency and that channel. Actually, as I, I told you before, you are not doing that by your bare hands. You can do it by using devices, you can use software, you can use hardware. Okay, so run Airshark wireless network cards, enter uh, Permiscus code, capture all packets it sees across the, the airwaves regardless of protocol or destination. You can use Airshark. Airshark is very strong uh, packet analyzer. You, you can use wireless network card and adapt it to Beremiscus code the uh, remiscus mode and this way it will be able to capture all data navigating in the frequency which frequency you want whatever frequency you want okay and today we will have a chance to do what to use wireshark to do wireshark and make uh, uh, analysis packet analysis okay Okay, what about the security? Okay, let me see. The security concerns of wireless network. Information theft. Information theft means the data is in the company or in the mobile device and somebody can, can steal the data. Malicious data insertion on wireless network. Malicious data wireless uh, insertion on wireless network is very hard. It may lead to denial of service because the data will be checked for errors on the receive or the receiver device, and it will it will make him or it will make the device busy doing that check. So this way, it will not have a service and its service will be down. Denial of service attacks, and this is common. Denial of service attacks means I can make or ask for legitimate actions from the server and the server will be busy replying to my legitimate requests. The victim or the, the the normal user will ask for service and he will not that we will not find that service available peer to peer hacking over ad hoc networks ad hoc networks means for example i can go into the vicinity i, I can be in the vicinity of the uh, not the vicinity actually i can reach the router that uh, use, using the access point or I can even reach the access point and use the my uh, rogue access point. Ad hoc network means the network that is used without any configuration. You want to have an access point, we just plug in and then it you have an access point. Just plug the access point and you have an access point. This is ad hoc network. This way the, the attacker can be easily reach the access point and and plant his access point. When attackers gain unauthorized control, unauthorized control means uh, the control uh, to control data, to control actions, to evest drop, to take all the functionality of the device. 